It is hard to believe that it was 13 years ago that Michael McClendon embarked on a shooting spree in three communities, Kinston, Sampson, and Geneva, Alabama. McClendon, a 28-year-old factory worker, would ravage not only his family, but these three close-knit communities. March 10, 2009 was a hot day even by Alabama standards. Temperatures soared above 80 degrees. But the South Alabama heat wasn't the only thing causing sweat that day. Disturbed by his parents' divorce years earlier, frustrated with life and the fact that his life goals of becoming a Marine or a police officer were unattainable, McClendon would go on a shooting rampage that would leave 10 dead and six others injured. This would be Alabama's deadliest mass shooting. And this is the unbelievable story of that day. Recorded in Rocket City, USA. No bullshit. Just real talk. And now Deuce Conrad. Michael Kenneth McClendon was born in southern Alabama to Lisa McClendon and her husband David. After his parents divorced, he was largely raised by his aunt and maternal uncle Phyllis and James White of Sampson, Alabama. He attended local schools. As an A student in high school, he was known for being quiet, and he graduated in 1999. Unmarried, McClendon lived with his mother at her home in Kinston. This area of southern Alabama has had a depressed economy following the relocation of textile jobs overseas several years before. McClendon's work history showed a pattern of short tenure at jobs. In 2003, he had tried to become a police officer in Sampson. In fact, he had passed the necessary background check, only to fail basic training. He didn't make it past the first day, said Becky Payne, an assistant to the director of the Alabama Advanced Criminal Justice Academy. Clay King, the mayor of Sampson, said McClendon had been a well-behaved child. In fact, he said, I've known him most of my life. I coached him in Little League Baseball. He had worked at the Reliable Products Warehouse in Geneva, where he was asked to leave in 2003. Then he and his mother had worked at Pilgrim Foods, a poultry plant, and they were suspended in 2006. Uh, The records show that McClendon and his mother, Lisa, are among employees who sued Pilgrim Foods over compensation claims in 2006. And as most recently up until 2009, McClendon worked at Kelly Foods, a sausage factory. But even then, he had quit that job abruptly, the Wednesday before the shootings. Supervisors there said that he was a team leader. And in fact, they said he was well-liked. One thing that was consistent for McClendon was a love of firearms. In fact, during his rampage, he would carry a 38 caliber revolver, a shotgun, an SKS rifle, and another rifle with a high-capacity magazine. You know, no one considered it unusual that Mr. McClendon collected guns, Mayor King said. People here hunt a lot, he said. They collect a lot of guns. I probably got 30 guns myself. It's just kind of a hobby. And that part of it wasn't concerning to me. Mr. McClendon was not licensed to carry the automatic weapons, but he was licensed to carry a pistol, said Chief Frankie Lindsay of the Geneva Police Department. Michael had purchased large amounts of ammunition the day before and ammunition for the automatic weapons that morning in Delville. McClendon began his attacks about 3.30 p.m. at his mother's house where they lived in Kinston, a town of just 540 residents. There, Michael McClendon shot and killed his mother and their three dogs. She was shot in the head execution style. 
Even more disturbing, after he shot them, he laid her face down on and around the couch. And atop her, he placed the dog's corpse. And he soaked them with paint thinner, officials said. Then he put a pile of clothes and stuff on his mother and dogs, and he lit the clothes on fire. Now this was according to Robert Preachers, the county coroner, who went on to say, I reckon he thought it would make her burn faster. Inside the charred home, a gun safe was left with its door ajar in military gear, including a camouflage jacket and a green military-style backpack, which was found inside that home. In another room, they found remnants of his baseball career, including a 1995 All-Star Trophy, which was prominently displayed. But on this day, there was a looming question. What would turn an unseemingly all-around good guy into a cold-blooded killer? Much less a person who would kill his own mother. I bet you have been to Walmart at some time in your life and probably shopped there. I bet you even probably get groceries there from time to time. Did you know that Walmart has grocery pickup? And in fact, I can save you $15 on your first order of $50 or more. For more information, go to www.deuceconradshow.com and select promotions. There will be a link there where you can sign up as a new customer. And again, you'll save $15 on that first order of $50 or more. After killing his mother and their dogs, McClendon drove his Mitsubishi Eclipse a dozen or so miles south to Sampson, Alabama. It was there that he went to the white frame house where neighbors said that he had lived for years with his uncle James White and aunt Phyllis. The Whites were on the porch with their daughter, Tracy Wise, age 34, her son Dean, age 15, and a family that lived across the street, Andrea Myers, age 31, who happened to be the wife of a local sheriff's deputy, along with her two children, four-month-old Ella and 18-month-old Corrine. McClendon's great-aunt, Virginia White, age 74, was in her trailer parked in Mr. White's side yard. Moments later, all but Ella and Phyllis White were dead. Michael McClendon chased Miss White, who ran through the house out the back door and to a neighbor's, witnesses said. Barry Applin told the Dothan Eagle newspaper that he saw McClendon chase a woman into her house and open fire. I saw him in the living room just blazing the world up, Applin said. In fact, one witness said that Miss White was saved only when McClendon's gun jammed. White sought refuge in the house of neighbor Archie Mock. She was just saying, I think my family is dead. I think my family is dead, Mock said. McClendon left the scene after chasing his aunt, said Tom Knowles, who's, who was at the, his son's house nearby and saw the shooting. After McClendon sped off spraying bullets, Cecil Knowles' wife, Alina, ran to rescue Ella, who was crying and covered in blood. It was then that McClendon circled the block in return, the Knowles uh, said. Knowles said McClendon returned moments later in his car as if he was looking for the aunt and then returned and looked at Knowles. Now, Miss Knowles, a certified nursing assistant, and her father-in-law, Tom Knowles, each hid behind a parked car as Michael McClendon pointed his gun out the window of the car. I yelled loud enough that he could hear. I've done nothing to you, and I don't know you, Mr. Noble said. 
Michael McClendon drove off again. The baby Ella was later taken to a hospital in Florida for surgery for a gunshot or shrapnel injury. Tom Knowles said that he had cold eyes. There was nothing. I hollered at him. I said, look, boy, I ain't done nothing to you. It was then that McClendon left for good. The sheriff's deputy, Josh Myers, who did not know that his wife and child were already dead, would be among the officers chasing Michael McClendon. I cried so much I didn't have a tear left in me, Deputy Myers told reporters. Seems like I should be able to walk into the house and my wife should be there. My baby girl should be climbing on me. Nearby, Mr. McClendon killed James Starling, who had recently moved his family to Sampson, where he worked at a Dollar General store. Starling, age 24, had two children and another on the way. He was just down a nearby street and tried to run, but was shot in the back, a law enforcement official said. Police said that the heavily armed McClendon then got into his car and drove through two towns, stopping and slowing down to fire at people on their porches, at a gas station, and even on the street. Do you have a beard? It's a legitimate question. You know, a beard says a lot about a man. A beard can define a man just by looking at him. Screw what they say. You can judge a book by its cover, and a beard is one hell of a cover. But let me ask you this. How do you take care of your beard? Are you putting chemicals into your face that will basically eat the hide off of a zombie? Stop that shit. Be a badass and start using badass beard care. Look, it's all natural. It's made by badass vets and it will make your beard so incredibly soft, so incredibly manly. And you can get a free trial set today by going to deuceconrad.com and selecting own promotions. Michael McClendon would shoot three more people at random as he drove towards the metal plant, all while firing from his car. Michael had left his grandmother's home and started driving, shooting at people from his car. Geneva County EMA Director Misty Wise is related to four of Michael McClendon's victims. This is something no one will ever forget. She said, my husband and I had actually just got off work when the pagers went off, informing us about an active shooter in Samson. And then we were told that we needed to get to Pullum Street. At the time, we had no idea what was going on, but when we arrived at Pullum Street at James White's house, where the shooting occurred, the sight was horrific. My husband went on ahead of me, and all I could do was sit down in the yard and pull my shirt up over my face. I just can't tell you how horrible it was to know four members of your family have been murdered, and for no apparent reason. His Uncle James and Aunt Phyllis basically raised him. Wise went on to say that Michael had actually passed them on the way to our family member's home. She said he looked right at us as he passed. He knew exactly what he had done to our family, and at the time, we had no idea. 
he basically sh- just shot everyone on the on the front porch. A normal day in Samson turned deadly and horrific in less than twenty minutes. Lies kept saying that as she remembers, she just remembers her and her husband rushing to Pullum Street, only to pass McClendon after he had shot multiple members of their family. Michael McClendon rounded the corner on the main street and Gunman would fire several shots at Bradley True Value Hardware Store. We were just business as normal. All of a sudden, there were bullets flying and glass was everywhere, owner David Bradley told the Dothan Eagle newspaper. We realized what it was and grabbed our guns. But then he was gone. No one was hurt in the hardware store shooting. There's a lot of people who had close calls, Adam said. One of those was Greg McCullough, who was pumping fuel at the big little store gas station when the gunman roared into the parking lot and slammed on his brakes. The first to die was 43-year-old Sonia Smith, a gas station attendant. Michael McClendon opened fire, killing Smith when she stepped outside and wounding McCullough with bullet fragments that struck his truck in the pump. At one point, the rifle appeared to jam, and Michael McClendon would fire more shots before driving off. She was a really good person. She was getting ready to go to work, said Smith's friend, Deborah Hill. She said Smith has a daughter who had just recently graduated from high school. McClendon next shot and killed Bruce Malloy, a 51-year-old motorist who did nothing more than just drive past him. But, it may never be confirmed, but Malloy most likely witnessed McClendon's murder at the Inland Gas Station And in a split second, he made the decision to risk his life for his friends. It is said that Malloy followed McClendon out of Samson, during which time it is believed he made several attempts to slow the murderer down. And as a result, he lost his life trying to prevent Michael McClendon from getting to others. It is. Bruce Malloy's actions that many believe gave law enforcement the chance to catch up to Michael McClendon. Are you looking for unbiased news in a world of biased media? Look no further. 1440 provides an impartial view of what's happening in the world so our readers can form their own conclusions. 1440 scours hundreds of sources each and every day to bring you a single morning briefing thoughtfully curated by experts. Straight to your email with no haggling or unnecessary spam. Get even more benefits by signing up to the Deuce Conrad Show affiliate link. Visit www.deuceconradshow.com and select Promotions to sign up today. Now, it is believed that just moments after Bruce Malloy was killed that Michael McClendon would have a confrontation with State Trooper Mike Gillis as he was traveling down Highway 52 into Samson proper. The trooper would suffer minor injuries, even though seven bullets would hit the trooper's vehicle. Uh, Listening to the police recordings of what occurred next has sent chills up the spines of people across the nation. Gillis attempting to stop or slow McClendon went under fire not once, but twice. As he attempted to tell dispatchers about his location, gunshots can be heard ringing in the background. 
but he kept going. It was, in fact, his communication to emergency dispatchers that alerted officers that McClendon was heading into, Gen into Geneva. Gillis said he was not thinking about the dangerous situation he was putting himself in. He was only thinking about how he could stop a madman. Gillis played out a, uh, placed out a call on his radio alerting Geneva of an active shooter headed that way. I remember hearing Trooper Gillis coming across the radio stating an active shooter was headed towards Geneva, and as he talked, you could hear the shots being fired in the background, said former Geneva County Sheriff Greg Ward. As McClendon traveled towards Geneva, Ward sent out his chief deputy, Tom Tony Helms, to confront the shooter. Helms' goal was to stop McClendon before anyone else was injured or killed. Now, Chief Deputy Helms said law enforcement agencies had different channels and this caused issues with communications. He said, you also have to remember that our rifles were not mounted, meaning they were easy to access. So when it comes to situations like this, time is very important. And it's time, as you know, time is something we did not have that day. The last fatality was 24-year-old James Starling. The man that we talked about that was simply walking down the street as Michael McClendon shot him in the back as he tried to get away. Now, towards the end of the attack, McClendon would engage in a running gun battle with police. Chief Frankie Lindsay was in the Geneva Library when he heard of the danger that was heading to the city, and he knew immediately that he was not going to let this man make it into his town. It only took Chief Lindsay about two minutes to encounter McClendon. He and Lieutenant Ricky Morgan encountered McClendon on Highway 52 just inside of Geneva. But by that time, police said McClendon had let loose with a volley at a Walmart. The officers attempted a pit maneuver in an attempt to corner Michael McClendon and disable his vehicle. That maneuver worked, but perhaps it worked a little too well. When the officers using their patrol vehicles hit McClendon's vehicle, it was spinned into a full circle. And following that spin, Michael McClendon began to fire on the officers. Chief Lindsay would be struck in the shoulder. Bullet holes could be seen in the car on either side of his head. Michael McClendon was shooting to kill. Lieutenant Morgan and his vehicle were shot at extensively after the pit maneuver. Morgan's vehicle suffered so much damage that it was considered a total loss. Remarkably, though, he was able to walk away relatively unscathed. Even the chief would survive and was able to drive himself to the hospital. Chief Lindsay said he opened up on us with an AK-47. That's what it looked like. It could have been an M-16, but it was an assault rifle, automatic, and he burst about 15 to 18 rounds on our vehicle all at once. It looked like he was trying to kill us. There's no doubt about it, Chief Lindsay said. We were face to face with him. He just put the weapon out the window and let go a burst. Chief Lindsay said that his bulletproof vest saved his life. The vest comes into play, I promise you. As he said that, with a nervous laugh. Since 1999, Rakuten has paid its members over $2 billion in cash back. Formerly known as Ebates, Rakuten is an affiliate reseller of over 2,500 online retailers. Uh, Rakuten passes part of their commission on 
their sales back to you in the form of a cash back payment. You see, you earn cash back by using the Rakuten online shopping portal. And using Rakuten is very uh, simple and easy. There are no fees or forms you need to fill out to get your money. Uh, but to get the cash back, all you have to do is start any online shopping you do at the Rakuten website. You'll click through their site to your preferred online store such as Target, Walmart, Sephora, Macy's, Nike, and many more. And then simply make your purchase as uh, usual. Easy, right? Well, I'm going to make it even better for you being a listener of the Deuce Conrad Show. As a first-time shopper, you will get up to $30 to use on your first purchase. Of course, certain terms and conditions apply. Visit www.deuceconradshow.com and select promotions to get started today. Soletta Darden, who is at a nearby Kentucky Fried Chicken, witnessed the shootout in front of Walmart. I heard five shots to my right, and then I looked up and I saw a maroon clip speed off from the scene. Then I saw deputies and troopers in pursuit after him. Darden said I was just scared, crazy scared. I thought, what the crap is going on? Now, law enforcement feared McClendon was headed to Reliable Metals in Geneva, where he had formerly worked. So that business was placed on lockdown. However, no one knew at the time that one side door would be left unlocked. Cops chased Michael McClendon to the Reliable Metal Products Factory in Geneva, Alabama, where he exchanged more shots with police before walking inside. In response to a request for assistance from the Geneva County Sheriff's Office and Sampson Police, Army troops from nearby Fort Ruckard were deployed to the streets of Sampson where they manned traffic stops and guarded a makeshift morgue. However, an Army investigation later determined this to be in violation of the Posse Comitatus Act, which prohibits federal troops from performing law enforcement actions and took administrative action against at least one officer. One of the officers who cornered McClendon at the factory was Josh Myers, whose wife and toddler daughter were shot dead earlier on a porch in Sampson, Alabama. Deputy Myers said, we get trained to handle something like this, but this was something that was never expected. He went on to say, I don't know how to handle this situation. It was at the factory that law enforcement began giving back the same barrage of fire that he was issuing to unarmed citizens. Chief Deputy Tony Helms said, as I pulled up to Reliable, me and the Geneva County Game Warden Joel Herdron, who was off duty at the time, fired as many shots as we could at Michael in his car. Officer Danny Staley also helped to corner Michael McClendon. Even though the shootout only lasted a few moments, it felt like hours to those officers. Our goal was to stop him, stop him right then. We were the only two law enforcement officers that fired shots at Michael, but unfortunately, he made it out of his vehicle and into Reliable. As Michael McClendon exited out of his vehicle, he ran inside, reliable through the unlocked side door. And after engaging in a shootout with police, Michael McClendon committed suicide inside the building. He had so much ammunition in his car that it appeared that he would have killed many, many more people. When law enforcement found McClendon dead from a gunshot, it was initially unclear whether or not it was self-inflicted. However, later reports confirmed that he had committed suicide. Michael McClendon's shooting spree lasted almost an hour before McClendon was found dead at 4.17 p.m. He was said to have been armed with a Soviet-made SKS and a Bushmaster. He also had at least one thirty-eight caliber pistol. He had fired more than 200 rounds, police said at a news conference. 
and there was still more ammunition left in his car. Once investigators got a look at the amount of ammunition he was carrying, they feared the bloodshed could have been worse. I am convinced he went over there to kill more people because he was heavily armed, said Coffee County Sheriff Dave Sutton. Hey, Deuce Conrad here. I just want to tell you about Ibotta. Ibotta is one of the greatest things I have ever laid my eyes on. It's a it's a great tool for actually earning money. And trust me, I've tried all these surveys and everything that the internet seems to say that you're going to make money, but nothing has made me money like Ibotta. In my first week of trying Ibotta, I earned approximately 40 bucks just shopping. It's like coupon savings for people that don't like to clip coupons. Anyways, there is a link in the description of this podcast uh, for you to become a partner with me in Ibotta. And when you submit your first receipt, you'll earn 10 bucks. That simple, that easy, just by going and shopping at places that you're already shopping, such as Walmart, Kroger, Publix. And it's easy to cash out as well. You can get uh, gift cards to Amazon or have a direct payment made to you. Anyways, check the link down below. Use uh, the referral code K-A-X-R-F-W-J and earn $10 on your first receipt submitted. Thank you for listening to the Deuce Conrad Show on Spotify Podcast. In case you didn't know, you can also hear this podcast on Google Podcast and Apple Podcast and most podcast platforms across the web. For more information about tonight's show, you can also visit www.deuceconradshow.com. Visit show notes for more details.